Welcome to the New York Red Bulls post game, brought to you by TCL, the official smartphone partner of the New York Red Bulls. They were under siege in the second half. Brendan Aronson with a fantastic goal to open the scoring for the Philadelphia Union, and then insurance goals. Katsper Shabilko, and then Ilsenio setting up Matt Real, beating Ryan Mara, and the Red Bulls suffer a shutout loss in their home stadium for the second time in a span of five days. This place has been a fortress since it opened in 2010. There is no team in Major League Soccer with more wins or points in their home arena since the debut of Red Bull Arena a decade ago. And those good times seem like a long time ago because this tonight was a bit deflating. Bradley Carnell in his first game as the interim head coach. Your diagnosis here of how they get shut out again and the goal drought is 235 minutes. Well, Steve, the, the, the goal was to come out, play hard, play aggressive, and you always knew it was going to go one way or the other. Anytime there's a coaching change, and especially so close to a game two days before, there's a lot of emotion in the locker room, a, a lot of emotion from players that were attached to the former coach, that are rooting and now worrying about their jobs with the new coach. And really, they started out this game well. But after the Brendan Aronson goal, it all fell apart. So I think that's strictly mental. They have a week to get it right. Danny Royer is a player, for instance, who is a proven goal scorer in this league. Double-digit goals each of the last three seasons. The chance he has in the first half. We've seen him finish a play like yep. that dozens and dozens of times. Does it wear on a player at this point when you know you haven't scored since pre-pandemic, in his case, back in that opening win over Cincinnati? Well, listen, you know, they always talk about goalkeepers being crazy. Anybody that scores goals is crazy, and they, they're streaky. They really are. He'll come out of it. The goals will come. The, the, the real question is, collectively, can this team get their heads on straight? They weren't in the game tonight, Steve. They really weren't. You talk, and you're right about Kyle Duncan. He's been so good. Mm -hmm. He was off tonight. Every touch, every th he took throw-ins where he threw it to the opposition. So it's a collective mentality. They got to get over it. They got to stand up and they have to try and play better. Uh, no Aaron Long tonight. No Captain Sean Davis. The team was sloppy though. Too many giveaways overall. And in this league now, 2020 MLS, you just can't do that. Yeah, the other thing they did, you're right about that. I, I think sometimes when you're trying too hard, every player tried to do too much. I saw too many players taking too many dribbles. In, in the defensive part of the midfield, Omir. Fernandez when he came in, Caceres, Florian Velo, too many giveaways. You can't lose that ball in that part of the field. They did it consistently tonight. Let's look at the highlights of the Red Bulls' latest defeat, their fifth loss of the season in 10 games. The post-game highlights brought to you by TCL, the official smartphone partner of the New York Red Bulls. This is Aronson to open the scoring. It's a great goal, but I talk about mental mistakes. There is nobody within 10 yards of him. They know who he is. He's at the edge of the area. You've got to mark him. Second half, this is when the Union just take control of the game. They were comfortable for the most part. El Senio comes off the bench and watch this sequence. Well, they look comfortable and watch Red Bulls. They look tentative. They weren't sure what they were doing. Nobody stepped up to pressure the ball. One touch, two touch, three touch. This is a clinic in how to pick a team apart. And, and Red Bulls, they were ripe for the picking. That's a beautiful sequence of passes that results in the goal. Shabilko again, nothing special, but the clinical finish. Second goal in as many games against the Red Bulls this season. And then for good measure, Matt Real, who came on as a second half sub. Well, I'll tell you what, Roy and Mara had no chance on any of these goals. This was a giveaway again by Fernandez deep in his own midfield. It results in the third goal. I am fascinated now to look at the approach for Saturday's game against D.C. United uh, and whether or not we'll see market changes uh, in the structure of this team. Look, it's been laid out. There's a certain style the way this team is going to play and there are only going to be tweaks to that. It's, it, it's not going to fluctuate in any great way. But do you revamp the starting lineup in some way that maybe we haven't witnessed yet through the first 10 games this season? Can they? Do they have the horses to do that? Yeah, I, I don't think they can, Steve. I think should they? Yes. I don't think they have the talent deep on the roster to really make wholesale changes. Mm. I can tell you that 
Bradley Carnell, in my opinion, is going to have a full week to work with these guys. I think you'll see a different team next weekend. Also wondering about Drew Yearwood and Samuel Tete, because this was really a fitness issue, getting acclimated with a new country, a new team, practices. Uh, they are about there. Tete was on the game day roster, and with his team chasing the game, I was surprised to some degree that we didn't see him enter the game. Maybe they felt it was too far out of reach and not the way to introduce him with the way the team was playing tonight. But we don't know what we have in Tete, but after you've been shut out, twice at home consecutively, maybe it's time to find out. <laughs> Listen, it's a multifaceted task. You can't have unrealistic expectations. Right. Even for Yearwood, in the brief time he was in the game, if you saw him without the ball, he had his hands in the air. Yeah. What, what are you doing, guys? Where are you going? So it's going to take them a while to get acclimated. I think they're two great additions. You have to give them time. Let's go downstairs to Michelle. Coach, you go into the locker room uh, after the first half, just down one nothing. What changed in that second half for your team? Yeah, the timing of the second goal. Um, we had a really good chat. First half was excellent, in my opinion. You know, only to de be defined by one shot they score, one shot we have a really good chance, and we don't. Um, and a game that's defined by these margins, you know, you get punished. And uh, the timing of the second goal, like I say, was a real gut punch, um, and and we had to deal with it. Um, we start chasing the game a little bit, it opens up, and naturally uh, we get caught on the back foot a little bit. So, you know, with a, playing up against the quality squad, you know, we need to make sure that, uh, yeah, we just need to win our physical duels, our, our battles, a 1v1 moments. Um, I don't think we can be happy with that on the day. Um, as, as good, as I saw a lot of good things, right? Um, uh, personally, there has to be some individuals, and, and as a team, we need to reflect and say, that I could I have won that battle, could I have won that tackle, could I have been a little bit more aggressive there. So, you know, there's some things to work on. But um, yeah, listen, it wasn't a fairy tale start we wanted. Uh, obviously, um, we had high hopes, we had high expectations, and uh, sometimes these things kick kicks on, and and you gain momentum and you run with it. And sometimes you just have to take a couple of gut punches and and deal with it. So, um, for the most part, yeah. Listen, what can I say? It's been a depleting week. It's been, a, mm -hmm. you, you know, the guys have dealt a lot with their emotions and uh, pulling themselves together and getting themselves ready. So, and that's by no means an excuse. It's it's something that uh, we have to learn by. You know, we had a good game plan, and uh, yeah, just unfortunately, if you look, we had so many crosses, uh, a lot of good shots. Unfortunately, none of them go in goal bound, and that's the big difference on the day. When a game's on a knife's edge, it goes one way or the other. So, yeah, listen, uh, we'll reflect, give the players off, uh, you know, two days and uh, let them reflect and see where we come in on Wednesday. Um, but, yeah, there's some positives to work with for sure. Coach, you hit on something that was important to me. They've dealt with a lot <coughs> in a short period of time. You all have. There's a lot of adversity that you've been faced with in a very short time span. How much do you think emotions played a role in this game tonight? Yeah, judging by the start, I thought we had a fantastic start, you know. So... And, and you try and when an when a interim steps in or a new coach steps in, the team obviously plays with renewed energy for two, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 50. And we went 45 minutes long. We went 60 minutes long with this renewed energy. And uh, yeah, the second goal, like I said, was a real heartbreaker. Um, and then you kind of felt from that point on, it was more about just, uh, yeah, consolidating and making sure we didn't uh, let this turn into a, you know, a big riot. You had some young players playing today. What'd you think of that performance? Yeah, good. I mean, we gave some youngsters a good chance. Mati, some extended minutes now, a little bit longer, you know. So he seems to be coming on the mend. Uh, you know, debut for Drew mm -hmm. Yearwood coming in there. You can see his, uh, his brain on the ball and, and his organizational skills. So he's getting, uh, um, you know, getting to the right sort of tone of how we play. Um, we need to ramp things up just a little bit. But, um, yeah, we saw some good positives on the day. Coach, thanks so much for taking the time. We appreciate you. Thank you. Steve, back to you. All right, Michelle, thank you. It's interesting. He pointed to that stretch of the game where the Red Bulls were clearly knocking on the door and doing better things. Uh, maybe the first 15 minutes of the second half approximately, and then the goal by Shabilko just takes all the wind out of their sails. And it seems like we have that conversation a lot. Those pockets of the game were clearly the better team, but nothing to show for it. That can wear on a team over the course of the season.
Yeah, Steve, it, it speaks, when you're not getting the results, it, it speaks to a fragile mentality. Mm. And that's what Bradley's talking about, right? They came out in the second half, really playing well, dominating, had the ball, they're attacking in the attacking third most of the time, and then you give up that second goal, and you could see, you could see the body language. When you're, when you're psychologically fragile because you've been losing, mm -hmm. you know, one goal can push you over the edge. Frustrating for the fans, too. They waited a long time for MLS to come back. Their team came out of the break with a nice win against New York City and unable to follow up on that in any real positive way since. We're back at it next Saturday. D.C. United. Red Bulls will be at Audi Field to take on their longtime rivals. We'll be back. This is one of only eight games in MLS tonight. We'll have the story.